Hey, welcome back, everyone. More Age of Empires for you here. The map is Lipany. It's a good map for the Abbasid, who I'm playing as, because there's just so many uh, uh, berry bushes everywhere. But that also makes it a good map for the Delhi Sultanate. That's who I'm playing up against. The player name is Hurricane. And uh, I like the Delhi choice on this map. Sometimes I am also tempted to play the Delhi Sultanate on this map because often the two sacred sites, well, th there's usually, well, there's always three sacred sites, but there's two usually in a clump and then one sort of separate from them. And if you can set up a defensive position as the Delhi, on those uh, two sacred sites, you can get a lot of gold. So if you can play aggressive early on as the Delhi and get those sites, then you can pretty much guarantee some gold income. I'm actually gonna go with a second scout to start off. I really want to, um, I really want to know what my opponent's up to and I really want to have scouts on the sacred sites. To watch out for when my opponent is going to build uh, outposts or when he's moving armies to and from uh, these outposts or uh, the, the sacred sites. So I'm getting my second scout here and you'll notice I'm, I'm going for my my standard opener here. I'm, I'm getting the, uh, the economic wing which will allow me to get fresh foodstuffs. But you'll notice I only have three on gold. Usually I, I go for another on gold. The reason for this is I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive here in the beginning. I might get a archery range and a stables before I go to my second town center. The reason we're doing that is so that we can do a little bit of pressure on the map and discourage my opponent from grabbing up the sacred sites for free. So we wanna make him pay to get the sacred sites. So we're probably going to put an outpost down, we'll have some units on the map, uh, and then we'll get our second town center. Because we're worried that he's just producing some military structures right now, and then from there he's just going to move out on the map, use his, uh, use his military units to put down walls, and then just completely secure one of the sacred sites. Or possibly the two that you can see kind of on the... Uh, west end of the map and as we're scouting around his base we find a sheep and then we notice a bunch of villagers on stone so it turns out my opponent instead of going for the sacred sites is actually going for a two town center opening also interestingly it looks like my opponent already has textiles so usually I would just be massacring these villagers when I attack them with my camel archer but instead we're just barely able to get one villager before he's able to retreat everyone. And gosh, look at all those sheep that they had right there. They must have just gotten really fortunate scouting the uh, map. So we're just gonna zip around, try to find other places where we can do some damage with our uh, camel archer and archer. Meanwhile, we're doing our own thing, getting up our uh, second town center. Didn't realize I was long distance mining for this stone. Bit of a whoopsie there, but it looks like we're already there. So a slight uh, delay there. And I'm trying to decide where to put my second town center. I could maybe put it on these deer, but instead I decide let's just put it nice and safe near my uh, other town center, which ended up being a good idea since he has a uh, horseman come out and start attacking down my villagers. Looks like, yeah, he already got one of them. So we've each lost a villager. Now we're both up to two town centers. Looks like he sends a scout out. We'll just snipe him down. And now we're going to probably focus on producing a mixture of units and trying to slowly get up to the castle age. So we're gonna keep harassing. We're gonna keep our eyes on these sacred sites. Just a few units on them. We want to make sure that he can't just send a scholar and grab one for free. So we're looking around, we're trying to find some soft points to attack. Maybe we can get something out of this gold. Oh yeah, there's some villagers. 
Oh, he's quick to pull them. Oh, one more shot would have been great there. Looks like he's got a horseman and some a scholar here. These two archers are not going to be uh, effective. I'll target down the scholar, but yeah, we're we're just not doing much damage. And now he has the sacred site. And so he's going to be gaining a lot of gold from this. We need to get him off this sacred site ASAP. So we're getting down a barracks. We're going to send Spearman out on the map. Economy-wise, we've got a decent amount on food. We've decided to rally units to the front of our base. And we are just gathering from these deer, gathering from these berries. Could have gone for this safer deer patch down here, but I figured... We'll come forward, be a little aggressive with our food gathering. Oof, we'd love to rescue this one villager here, but doesn't look like it. Definitely seen more and more uh, horsemen, so we definitely need to get more spearmen out on the map. We've upgraded them to veteran, or to hardened, I should say. Hopefully we can do something out here. He has put down an outpost in this stealth forest. A great choice because uh, stealth forests are just so difficult to see through. And it looks like we're getting a big pickup here. We got the horseman and the, uh, the scholar. And now we can neutralize that sacred site that he grabbed earlier. And I decided I had a lot of spare wood, so we're just going to put down a battering ram and start attacking this uh, outpost. Meanwhile, it looks like we got a villager on his stone. We're just kind of harassing it. Probably don't need these units burning down this mining camp. Could probably send them elsewhere. And nice, we're neutralizing that sacred site. It looks like we even put an outpost down here and we're putting the arrow slits enhancement on it. Rallying more villagers over to the deer because we're pretty good on gold. Just need a little bit more. And then we can age up once we get a bit more food. Finding more villagers. This is what we want. We just want to harass. We need these units to actually attack. Okay. There we go. Finally. Yeah, get some villager kills, please. Of course, we lost villagers down here. Looks like we retreated some of them. And now the battering ram is going to work on his outpost. Hoping that we can burn it down, or we can knock it down with the battering ram before he burns down my uh, battering ram. Mm, it's burning. It'll eventually go. I've got some units here, which I can engage. Let's see what he does. Looks like he retreats into the outpost. And now we'll just burn this down. But we really don't want to engage. He's got a lot of horsemen. Yeah, we need to back off. I need more spearmen. More spearmen, more archers. Fortunately, we've got small clumps of units moving around on the backside of his base. We're just finding out where he's gathering resources. Look at that. Finding more of his villagers. Pull him off of uh, the berries. Smart that he put down a uh, outpost here but I am getting him off of those berries. This is a good move from him. He's sending his horsemen out on the map to burn down outposts. If you're playing as the Delhi, it's a good idea to make lots of horsemen because your opponents are always going to put down these outposts near the sacred site, and they can burn down these outposts really quick. Unless the opponent gets this fortify outpost upgrades, it's pretty easy to just burn them down. Unfortunately, lose a uh, villager there, but I'll send in some more of my forces to uh, get his archers out of here. And we were able to get this outpost up, so yeah, we, lo we lost that one, but looks like we're going to secure this one. And he's losing archers. I make it to the castle age, so does my opponent. We're still discouraging him from some of these resource points. So it it's nice that we've got good vision of where he has expanded to. I like that I've kept this scout moving and alive because we're, we're getting a lot of information. Looks like we need to get these villagers working away. We need to make the transition to farms, which we're starting to do. Good, we're getting the preservation of knowledge. 
would definitely like to see this group of villagers either farming or onto gold or even stone never know looks like i'm sending them down to hunt these deer which might be a bit too much food we actually already have a lot of villagers on food i'd rather send some of those to wood or maybe stone walling off down here good idea because i like this bottom area look at how many resources are down here a big stone patch a relic neutral market two gold patches actually three including this one another stone patch and berries along with this already being taken deer patch i just really like securing this corner if we can because we're doing a good job discouraging him from his own corner I'm trying to deny him all this free food over here It looks like he's still mostly going horsemen, and look, he's getting a lot of gold. Since he doesn't have access to these uh, sacred sites, he's definitely going to go heavy into gold, so he can make elephants and uh, siege weaponry, and probably knights as well. This villager we almost killed with the uh, emplacement here. Hopefully I notice it and send my units forward. Over here, losing units. Over here, we're trying to put some pressure on. Looks like he had vision of my units coming. Just a few spearmen and some horsemen can probably do a good amount to this uh, outpost. But I think I'm going to retreat my units down here. And it could be a good idea to build a, um, a, a ram if we can. We're pretty aggressive with our unit production right now. We're getting crossbowmen, man-at-arms, knights. We're getting a real variety of units. Nice, we kill the uh, villager who was down here. Now we're just picking away at this outpost. We're trying to harass with our lancers, or our knights, essentially. But his villagers with their textiles, and he's got these veteran horsemen just chasing my knight everywhere. Not much we can do. That said, we'll, we'll just keep harassing. As long as we keep him busy. Yeah, we're stabbing away at these villagers, although he's got a uh, spring alden placement on this outpost here. He has a tower elephant, and the relics are starting to disappear off the map. You'll notice the two on his side are gone, and now there's just the three left. One down here, one up here, and this one, which I suppose was in between us. Fortunately, I've walled this section off, so I need to just send a monk up that way, or an imam. It looks like I do have my mosque. Oh, okay, yeah. Looks like I'm grabbing up the uh, first relic here. We're camping on these deer. Just don't want them to get an easy free... Uh, food resource. If we look at the current resources, my opponent is way ahead, but that can be a bad thing. Like this, this could be converted all this wood into siege weaponry if he had some more gold, or he could make a lot of archers, but instead he's just kind of floating a lot of this wood. Me, I'm floating a lot of food. Really don't need as many villagers on food. There we go. Looks like I sent some villagers over to start chopping trees. That's balancing my economy out a little bit more. Would like to see me get agriculture and maybe chew through some more of these blacksmith upgrades. We got the sacred site and we're bringing back a relic. That's going to be a lot more gold income. Let's check income. He's ahead in food a little bit. I'm ahead in wood and wood a little bit. I am ahead in gold thanks to the um, sacred site. And it looks like I am actually mining stone unlike my opponent. Opponent is sending in some man-at-arms but I've made crossbowmen so I'm not too worried about it. And now I'm going to drop a keep back here just to defend this this wide area. If I can secure this and wall this off then I'm feeling pretty good. Nice. Putting down a battering ram, we can knock down this outpost. Some of his man-at-arms went into the back of my base, but I'm not too worried about them. They can't do too much damage back there. 
getting down more barracks because I noticed that he had an elephant the last time he and uh, I kind of fought in his base. Nice, sending more of my cavalry out to try and get villager kills. And we're getting them. He's just really tempted by these berry bushes. Nice. Yeah, it's really great having just small clusters of troops on the enemy's side of the map. Because you can get some great vision, and you can deny a lot of resources, and even, if you're lucky, get a few villager kills. This outpost is a problem. I really need better vision in this uh, stealth forest. It's good that I have these walls down, but I really need to uh, really need to secure more of my side of the map. Opponent hasn't done a good job walling, even though his his units can easily wall. And now in income, I'm a little ahead in food, way ahead in wood, and a little bit in gold, but it looks like he's transferred over to gathering stone. And now we're gonna start to see my opponent's strategy. I wasn't really sure what my opponent was going for here, but it turns out my opponent got the compound of the defender. That's this landmark right here for the deli. And that makes stone, like walls, uh, stone uh, emplacements and, and, and outposts, basically any defensive structure that you build, cheaper. And in particular, the deli like this because it makes keeps a lot cheaper. And what you can do as the deli is you can make lots of keeps and then research a technology called village fortresses. Though, once you complete that research, you can produce villagers from your keeps, and they act as town centers. So it's an incredibly powerful research, because now you'll be up to a huge number of town centers, and you'll have fortresses, you'll have keeps everywhere. All of them providing a safe spot to drop off and gather resources. Three tower elephants here, very strong. But if I can get my spearmen on top of them, then we can kill them. I decide to focus one of the uh, elephants down. On the back end, my mangonel is trying to destroy his, uh, his tower. And that's good because we really need to reduce his vision here and get some vision of our own up. Finding a few villager kills here, but I think I'm a bit too deep. Need to back off because here he comes forward with lancers, a bunch of veteran horsemen. We need to back up to the safety of our own outposts, to some of our siege units. And we need to just discourage him from coming forward with all these units. Fortunately, all these crossbowmen do great work versus his knights. So if he wants to trade here, we can trade. Heck, I've even got a veteran spearman on the backside getting shots. So look as he tries to retreat. Hopefully the crossbowmen will pick off some. Nah, but they did good work. Okay, let's take a look at what's going down. We're trying to take this sacred site. We've got the units for it. And yeah, we're going to try and neutralize it with our mom. This will burn down. If we can capture this sacred site, we will start the sacred victory timer. Yep, burning that down. And we're also going up to the Imperial Age. So if we neutralize this sacred site, we can start the timer. We'd love to wall this section off. This tower isn't doing much. And we're losing units, those units that we were harassing with on the back end. We're into the Imperial Age. We've captured, well, we're capturing this sacred site. So we're getting a lot of gold income. What are we gonna do with that gold income? Looks like I'm spending it on hand cannoneers high damage units that just mow down everything in their path. Okay, he's making some archers. We're just going to retreat into this tower. And he's trying to come forward with horsemen. I don't like that he has all these veteran horsemen. I really need to wall this section off. Great that I'm approaching a sacred victory. Would really like to get more stones so we can put down defensive structures. Like we could put emplacements on outposts. We could wall off segments like this, or we could put keeps down of our own. Looks like we're up to two relics. Wonder where that third one is at. Oh, no, there it is. The mom's bringing it in. And now we spot one of the 
keeps. So yeah, he's gonna research this village fortresses technology. Keeps act like town centers, including unit production, population capacity, and technology. So basically, he can produce villagers from his keeps, and he can drop resources off at his keeps. It's gonna be very painful once he gets that technology. Here come a big wave of uh, horsemen. I need more spearmen. I have some here. They might be able to do some good work. But unfortunately, he's got tower elephants to back them up along with veteran archers. And here's his plan. Just move forward and then drop a keep. Basically, all of his units just rolled in here. I didn't have my stone wall completed, and now he's going to put a keep down here to defend the, sac the uh, sacred site. And he'll just hold up here. He can even gather resources. He could chop these trees. He could uh, go for the gold nearby. But yeah, he's just going to sit here, and this is what he's going to do. He's going to take strategic points on the map with these keeps, and if I try to deal economic damage to him, like kill his uh, villagers, it won't matter because he'll have effectively seven, eight town centers in the future he's wisely using his cavalry to burn down this outpost and I'm kind of split here if I take my units away from the front of my base I'll be exposed to this night run by but I really need to send my units around the back way to clear out all of this so I need to find a sort of multi-prong approach here and I need siege units fortunately my Siege Workshop is working pretty much non-stop, and I can build a lot of stuff in the field because I'm the Abbasid. I can make spring alls and mangonels. So we're going to come forward with this army, and we're going to try and kick him out of here. I don't like that he's standing up here, and he's going to bring a trebuchet up here pretty soon and just start taking out all these structures. Notice that for the Imperial Age, I actually went uh, trade wing. We do have markets set up. We'll eventually start producing traders. I didn't want to produce them just yet since it seemed so dangerous with his units all just hanging out here. Ooh, free villagers. Would love to take some of them out. Although, as I've said, killing his villagers isn't, a, isn't all that great. We have our own trebuchet working on his... Uh, no, it looks like I'm attacking his walls. But really, I need this to come forward. Looks like, yeah, I'm coming forward with it. I'm going to have it target down the uh, fortress. Or the, uh, the keep. Yeah, there's his own trebuchet. Dealing good damage. We've got a springald back here. We can use that to deal with his mangonels. The mangonels are really effective against my large infantry. Uh ball here we're still seeing a lot of horsemen as well trying to chase out his uh, knights fortunately i'm putting a lot of um spring alden placements down as well so these these oh, these knights are just getting picked apart on their way over oof and yeah, these knights are not going to be uh, hanging out for very long Oh, they all just got sniped. I'm gonna lose my mining camp. But I'm coming forward with a spring all. There's a little gap here. My units were able to burn down the wall. And now we're getting shots on his mangonel. Would love to get one more shot. Nice, finish off one of the mangonels. So now we're a little less scared to come forward. And now that we can actually attack stone walls while they're under construction, that's really promising. So we bust through there. And now we're just fighting um, horsemen. We're not that scared. We'll come forward and try to clear all this out. We'd love to target down the trebuchet with uh, the spring all that I just built. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, I'm trying to put a keep down here, but he already has a keep down. And here's something to keep in mind when you need to tear down a bunch of keeps. Your bombards don't have quite the same range as your uh, trebuchets. So it's important to have vision for them. If you have a scout nearby providing vision, or an outpost nearby providing vision, your siege units will do a much better job taking out uh, keeps. Here he comes with a bunch of horsemen. It's just horsemen, but they're just going to burn down my uh, siege units. 
I'm fine with that. He'll have to sacrifice a bunch of his horsemen to do it. I canceled the keep just to save my uh, stone. We're still sieging down his um, keep, but the trebuchet, I mean, it's trying to do damage, but he's just repairing it on the back end. So we're trying to attack from multiple angles. There, we're, we're taking down this keep. If he wants to come forward with his horsemen, we'll just mow them down. I don't think he can actually kill this bombard. Yep. And we're trying to discourage him from continuing his uh, keep creep. Sending forward units. We're going to see what we can find here. I've decided to just ignore the spring alts. Should probably send the knights onto them, but never mind. Oh, and here come the elephants. This keep is going to get destroyed. Yep, there go the villagers. Should probably cancel this keep, but I don't think I'm going to notice in time. And there is just everything going on right now. This keep got denied, but here come his elephants. I'll need to send units forward. Over here, we're sieging down another keep with a trebuchet. Over here, we're actually producing a... We're field constructing a bunch of battering rams to try and take down his keep. Amazing. Oh, he's going to destroy this one? Oh, no, we're starting to construct it. Incredible. So we'll send these uh, rams in to try and destroy this keep. In the center, we're trying to discourage his elephants from coming forward. Now we're just using the bombards to tear down this keep. I don't think he should finish it. He shouldn't. That's a lot of resources down the drain. Sure, I lost out on this one, but he just lost out on this one. Still trying to burn this keep down. Oh, looks like it's right on its last legs. Can we knock it out? Nope. I think he's just repairing it too much. And now he's coming forward with units. The battering rams are coming forward. He can't repair faster than these rams are tearing it down. So we get through, and finally we've denied him this sacred site. Backside, we're trying to do some night harassment, but it's just not very effective. Everywhere we go, there are outposts or keeps. Fortunately, we did get up into the trade wing, and we are starting to get our uh, caravans going. So you can see we're researching spice roads to increase the gold income from traders. We're getting a lot of upgrades now. Also, we've noticed a large spring alt collection from my opponent. Rather than making spring alts, we can do something better. We're going to make culverins. It's nice having this uh, siege workshop, but I think I'd really like another siege workshop or two. My military production is a little thin. Would like to see me... Uh, put down some more more structures games going late it's starting to feel like it's gonna be a big long drag out fight and at least I've got multiple angles going right now he's pretty much got this in, I mean this is kind of a stalemate here if I bring some siege weaponry over here we can keep the battle going oh I hope this keep finishes before these knights come forward oh that would be great nice good work villagers but at least we have units up here so we can do uh do some harassing and it looks like yeah i'm finally walling this section off if we can wall this off that'd be great here he comes forward with his spring alts would love to send my own spring alt and units forward to take these out it would also be nice to get a uh, keep up here or maybe an outpost, something to give vision over all of this because he continues to creep forward with these keeps. Look at that. I suspect he'll put another one like right here-ish or maybe here. Yep, there it is. We cannot allow him to just continue coming forward like this. I'm hoping I recognize this and try to punish it. And fortunately, we find his spring alts here. We're going to send our units forward, try and knock them out. 
we're continue oh we actually have rams up here that we're gonna send in some un uh, unescorted rams oh there were villagers up here should have gone for those not that these rams could have done anything but should have sent some units that way Looks like we were able to deny the keep. It wasn't that hard. We had these culverins, and we just had a standing army to shoo away his villagers and just tear down the uh, structure. And now we need we need better vision here. We need scouts, and it looks like I'm actually smart. I'm actually producing scouts as part of my army. Problem is we're a little maxed out on units. Need to send in some of these units. Okay, yeah, we're sending in small groups. Problem is with sending these small groups in, they don't accomplish very much. There's the battering rams just trying to destroy some uh, some houses, but he's wise and just sends a few lancers to knock them out. But as you can see, what what's there for us to destroy? I mean, looks like we're trying to deny this gold vein, but yeah, he'll just throw down more keeps. Anywhere we go, we could run right smack dab into a keep. So it's hard to harass. It's hard to really punch through and do damage. And here, yep, the spring alts come forward, and now they're taking out my culverins. But I'm happy to return fire. The culverins one-shot these spring alts. I need better vision here. I think after that fight, I realized, like, everything's just way too dark over here. I need vision. Get my scouts in there. burning down more structures but these keeps were just not doing anything to and it's just a waste sending them in there's no villagers here anyway over here we're, we're making good uh good progress this small group will actually be able to do some damage especially if i send them up into these uh berries don't send them on a suicide mission against this keep ah no 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 they got distracted great So now, where are the resources on the map? What exactly is there left? Well, there's this gold vein right here. It hasn't really been claimed by either side. Oh, just a few more hits on that. Oh, wow, he retreats it inside. Amazing. Oh, and I'm losing my knights to the fortress. That's annoying. So there's this gold vein here. There's this gold vein here. Both of those are pretty secure by him. I am fortunately mining from this large gold vein and have been for some time. And we have secured this gold vein thanks to this keep. Additionally, we're invested in the long run. We've got about 20, oh, we got 13 traders going right now. They haul back 173 gold and 33 wood. That's awesome for my siege heavy uh, composition. Upgrades nearly all the way done we even have a madrasa that has some of the infantry and ranged upgrades and nice we're finally getting that vision i was talking about this bombard it needs to start there we go it's going to start working on this keep and fortunately it has an escort and the scout here is what's giving him the good vision this is how we're getting good vision over these keeps and uh, basically sniping everything down with our bombard now that I have good vision and a decent amount of uh, siege units, we're going to start to make some headway here. He's got his own siege units. He's working on my stone walls up here. We have secured both these sacred sites. This is the last one to secure. You can just hear the, the, the cannons just booming across the map. Just echoing. Units here are getting good kills. Looks like he's finally going for this gold vein. Looks like I'm pulling my units back. Would love to see them maybe just put down a battering ram. I have these spare infantry groups. Would much rather use them to uh, build siege units. Looks like I'm getting a mix of trebuchets, bombards, culverins. I mean, four culverins. He can't even make siege units anymore at this point. Culverins don't do much versus these keeps, but might as well have them doing something. He busts through the wall up here. 
And I really need to patch that up. He could swarm in with a bunch of uh, uh, horsemen. Yeah, definitely need to patch this up. And maybe put some more defenses down. Yeah, it looks like I'm going with an outpost. And he's continuing to try to come forward. He's repairing all his keeps. Oh, here come the spring alls, but look at all of our culverins. Yikes, he should not have come forward. Nice, the trebuchet is really helping out. You know, over here, trying to finish some of his villagers so that we can finally tear this damn thing down. Oh, but here he comes with his own knights. I don't think I'm going to do it. He's just going to burn this thing down. It was already injured. There you go. Up here, looks like we patched it up, but he's just going to continue to tear it down. Yeah. Should really have this spring alt go and destroy that trebuchet. We have positioned ourselves along this tree line. This is kind of what I was looking for, but I felt a little nervous moving in here. I didn't want to get caught, so I'm instead just going to back off and we can just continue to tear down keeps. We're just carting bombards all around the map. Good that we're getting this outpost down. This will give good vision on these two keeps. And we'd love to get another outpost maybe over here to get vision on these two keeps. Or yeah, maybe one right here. Like I said, we need vision of these keeps if we want to start uh, using our bombards on them. Like these, well these three units I could just send in to tear it down. Again, he rips through this wall here. And that's unfortunate. I don't want him getting into this back lines and destroying all of my traders who are really valuable right now. My income is just out. It's out of control thanks to these uh, workers or these traders. And there's not much gold left on the map. Like I said, he's probably mined this out in that time. There's this gold vein here, this gold vein here, and not really much else. He's coming forward with his... Uh, his elephants and he snipes down my uh, bombards but now oh I get to see all his spring alds if he wants to battle it out fine the culverins are just going to destroy everything back there and I think he sent his uh, elephants too far forward I have so many units and we have better upgrades we just moved to the imperial age so fast it's going to take him a long time he's still not in the imperial age so he can't get up to those 3-3 three, three upgrades He's continuing to repair keeps, but we're just gunning them down. We'll be able to take care of this one soon enough. Oh, nope. Here come the Lancers and here come the Villagers. If he wants to send the Lancers forward, fine. These outposts are all starting to become weaponized. I'm gonna try to save it by repairing it with Villagers. They actually do a decent job. But then this, uh, elephant shows up and just rips it apart but yeah he just lost a lot of valuable units here and losing this war elephant is going to be really painful so he's throwing away parts of his army but he is making good trades back here his lancers are finding my caravans these poor traders need to get units over there looks like i'm going to send this group we need to plug this hole. And he's neutralizing the sacred site while he's at it. We just cannot seem to get through these two keeps. Up here, we can't seem to get through this keep. Our once mighty number of uh, traders has been reduced down to maybe 22. And if only we had researched the extra trader armor. The research I never get. Fortunately, looks like I got units to clean it up, and this keep going down will be really helpful. Oh, it looks like I sent units forward, but again, there's a keep. There's always a keep. Looks like I've got some infantry back here. I think I might start to work on some of his structures on this side. I think I noticed that the back side of his base wasn't all that well uh, 
defended by keeps. So if I can attack from back here, I could probably rip apart a lot of his infrastructure. Looks like we're back to sieging down keeps. He's, oh, he's using horsemen now, veteran horsemen. You'll notice that the knights are disappearing. He's no longer fighting me with knights. It's starting to just come down to horsemen. And now we're trying to tear down some of his structures. We'd really love a uh, battering ram back here. We got the wood for it. Just toss down a couple. And our gold and food is just insane. We can make all the uh, hand cannoneers and knights we want. And that's probably how we're going to win the game. Just pure infantry numbers. And who knows if he's even got the wood to... Uh, oh no, he does. He has plenty of wood. He can keep repairing these keeps as long as he wants. Oh, we finally got through a keep over here. And it looks like we're finally getting down some more vision. This five culverin are all I'll ever need. I should probably stop producing them. And finally we get some more siege workshops. We've resolved the conflict over here. We've gotten down our keep. We've at least still got 17 traders going. We're doing a lot of uh, infrastructure damage back here on his houses. Happy about that. At least my units are doing something rather than getting killed by keeps. He's coming forward with a lot of horsemen. I don't know. Oh, he's trying to destroy the trebuchet, I guess. But, I mean... He's going to lose a lot of his horsemen, probably all of them in the process. Yeah, ouch. So I'll just wheel in another one. I mean, look at how many bombards we're producing now. Thanks to our gold income, I mean, we can just make as many as we want. We find more of his spring alts and just wipe them out. And now we're finally getting good vision up here. He built a keep behind this wood line. Thank God he doesn't have vision up here. Oh, nope, there it is. This keeps starting to take shots at my villagers. We really need to tear this down. Fortunately, the bombard can shoot through these trees. And now we have a ton of siege. Just a ton of them. And I've got units in his base. We just ran past everything. We're back here now. He parks units on the sacred site, and this is when I realize I don't think he has anything left besides these keeps. He makes it to the Imperial Age, but I don't really see where his economy is, because all these farms are lying unworked. There's no more gold really on the map. I really need to check this gold. He's parked just a bunch of scholars on the sacred site I think I won because I mean we're in the middle of his base we're ripping apart all of his structures we got it it was an intense game I haven't really gone against a deli player who does the uh, village fortress strategy and it was frustrating so many of my units just got thrown away dying to his defensive structures but I was smart in that I attacked him from multiple angles and I didn't think to myself, oh, I need to keep harassing him. I need to just keep harassing his villagers. Instead, I actually spent a good amount of time prepping myself for a long game where I'm going to need to prioritize vision and siege units. So it, it was nice that I didn't get caught up in the small things. And I realized that I needed to get this... Uh, whenever there was an area that had more than one keep, I needed to get a tower down, set up a little defensive line, and then send in some siege units. I think my opponent going with the 2TC opener was pretty interesting. I don't see Delhi players do that very often. And I'm not sh I, I wasn't really sure if that's something that you do for the village fortress strategy. I mean, eventually you're going to have like seven town centers. Why build two in the beginning? I figure you'd want to just rush to the castle age and then start getting your keeps. But I guess not. 
I guess the idea here for him was let's get the two town centers, try to get ahead. I think one scary moment in the game was when I went to the Imperial Age. I think he had a lot of horsemen and a lot of um, elephants. And he could have easily uh, ripped apart my army. And I wouldn't have really had much of a response. But we got lucky. We had a keep down here. And he just didn't feel good about coming forward. So we were fortunate in that regard. And I'm glad I denied him from a lot of the sacred sites for most of the game, because he can get a lot of income from that. Overall, had a lot of fun. I hope you liked seeing this strategy that uh, Delhi players can take. Uh, it's fascinating how strong keeps are, and uh, just how difficult it is to destroy them if you're active about repairing them and keeping them alive and putting them on important points. Anyway, hope you can make it for the next match. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time.